Today I'm going to be showing you how to grade between the waist and hip on any pants or trousers pattern. I'm going to show you how to change your pants to have a larger waist to a smaller hip or a smaller waist to a larger hip. I'll also show you how to update any other pattern pieces you need to sew to your new front and back pattern and tell you what size to cut in your other pieces. I'll be using the Merriam Trousers by Cashmerit Patterns as my example today, and you can find a tutorial on their website for grading between waist and hip sizes as well. And if you wanna see me cut and sew these, those videos are linked in the description. This tutorial is a little different than the usual one you see because we're going to be able to see exactly what circumference and which line we need to draw onto our pattern with no second guessing. Patterns come to us with a lot of lines on them and it's hard to know which to use since the gray sometimes shows up on both the center and the side seams. All right, let's get started. The pattern pieces you'll need for this tutorial are the full front and back pant in the hip size you want. You will also need a copy of the upper front pant and the upper back pant in the waist size you want, just right here to like the upper thigh. For the remaining pattern pieces like the pockets, waistbands and fly, you'll need those to be in the waist size you're planning on. You won't need any special tools, just some pins, tape, and your favorite way to cut stuff. All right, let's get going. And remember, there are timestamps in the description and you can adjust the speed and turn on closed captions at any time. Each tutorial is really quick, but I like to give you context for each step. Check out the timestamps to go directly to the tutorial you need once you prepare your pattern pieces. And please don't forget to let me know how your pants came out and which pattern you made in the comment section. Happy drafting. All right, so to prepare your pattern pieces, I want you to do two things. I want you to put a line right here that is at the juncture of your crotch point here. So draw in your seam allowance right here on the crotch line here and on the inseam. And then I want you to square a line over that's perpendicular to the grain line. So you're gonna take your ruler, line it up on the grain line here. So I've got this little line on my ruler lined up there and I would use a bigger ruler, something I can get definitely get a square line on, and then um, something that's long enough too. And then I would draw a line straight across. Sorry, I know I already have a messy line on there. So like that. So you're gonna need this horizontal line. Do that on your front and your back for all your pieces. It's gonna make it a lot faster and easier when we get there. Okay, the next thing that I want you to do, and you can wait to do this until we get to the pocket pieces, because you might not have to do this, but um, just tape some paper on the corner of your upper pocket. Not this long curved edge, but you're gonna wanna do it right here at the corner on each of these pieces. And then this one, it'll look like this side here. This is the pocket opening side. There's the straight edge right there. So uh, just add some paper there, and then they're ready to go, and it'll be really easy. All right, so I'm gonna start on the back. The back's a lot easier to start with. There's less going on back on the back side, and we don't have to deal with that side seam with the front opening pocket yet. And uh, we can use the back to transfer the side seam onto the front and make it a lot easier. So I've traced off my larger size to the paper below, but that's only because I wanna preserve this piece for the rest of my tutorial. You don't need to trace it off. You can just use your actual pattern piece, but I'm gonna put mine aside. And all I really needed on this was the perimeter and then that, that line down here. So that's all I'm worried about. Uh, so we're gonna be going down in size. And you can line this small pattern piece up on top of the other one, stacking this cross line here at your crotch point. So I want you to stack those lines there. And then I want you to slide this over to your center back now this one is maybe why, how I traced it or something. There's a little bit of an angle here. We're gonna just slide it over like that, all right? So now we're just lining up our center back. And now let's talk a little bit about height in the torso. So I'm gonna be tracing off the smaller size directly onto this larger one. Now you can choose to keep the length of the torso for this upper portion of the pant, or you can choose the shorter torso of the smaller size. That's up to you. If you're a very tall person with a slender torso, you might want this extra height up here, but the circumference of a smaller size, this is when you can kind of fiddle with the grade like that. As long as you're consistent to front to back, everything's gonna be fine. So 
I'm gonna go with the smaller uh, size and the smaller torso length, but I just wanted you to note that so that you can make that option or make that choice if you want. All right, so we're just gonna directly trace this on here. And we're gonna use the dart and the welt marking, and I'm only gonna go to about right there, uh, of this smaller size, right? So transfer all this directly onto the one below. And if you, like, if this is just your pattern, right, you can, instead of tracing all this, you can just cut this upper portion off and tape it directly onto your pattern piece. And then that way it's all preserved. If you're doing the longer torso, I want you to slide this all the way up, lining it up on this center back line right here, and then tracing off this width right here. So you can go like this, right? Or you can just cut this upper portion off and tape it directly on here and then you have all of your markings ready to go. And then you just wanna trace a little bit up here. All right, so let's get back to my lower one here. All right, so we've got this lower line. Now we wanna maintain the full hip and in the bottom portion of this pant, right? So now we need to, and remember I'm skipping two sizes. So I'm going up three sizes. So this is quite a jump. And remember my pattern right here is 60% size. It's not a full size. So it also looks a little bit more of a jump because of the percentage. I have a very, a much shorter distance in order to get to that smooth out this line. All right, so it'll probably be a lot easier for you. So one thing to remember, just because I had you draw this line on here, that's not the hip, all right? That's the thigh, that's the top of your thigh. This portion of your pant below here, that goes around your leg. Everything above that goes around your torso. And so we need to focus on this area about right here. This area is your full hip right here, this low part of the crotch rise here. So we're going to take this existing pattern and we're gonna line it up over here and try and get to that full hip, let's mark it. We're gonna try and get about right here to that full hip using our existing pattern piece. You can use a ruler too, but the existing pattern piece is really nice. And so there we go. Now, if you have some funny little shapes here or it looks a little bit like, oh, you know, maybe that's too uh, much of a curve, you can flatten it out a little bit or maybe you can, you know, get there a little sooner like this and then kind of square it off a little bit and even add a little bit down here. You can do a lot of little things to kind of push and pull that line and get it into a nice smooth um, shape. Um, and Or maybe you're shaped like that or maybe you need it to be a little bit more pronounced. All right, and so that's it. That's all you have to do to grade between your sizes for the weight, a smaller waist, larger hip. And now what I would do is I would cut out along this new line here, unless you have the taller one. I would use the, the welt and the dart of that smaller size. And then everything below, I would just use the larger size and your back is ready. So now this is our, our back with a size 10 waist and 16 hip and the rest of the pant as well. All right, so now set this aside and um, you might wanna cut this out so that we can use it for our side seam on the front. All right, for the front, same thing. We're, I'm gonna trace mine off just to preserve this pattern piece for the rest of my tutorial. You do not need to do that. You're gonna put your larger one down and we're gonna make all of our changes to it using the smaller piece here. And you're just gonna make sure you have that um, cross line like I told you about earlier with, at the crotch rise here. So remember, seam allowance here and then square off from that point. Make a perpendicular line from your grain line that intersects with that point right there, all right? All right, and so here is my smaller front and we're doing the smaller waist, larger hip. So um, the big important thing about the front is that we need to maintain this little slanted line here for the trouser pocket. And we don't wanna change this opening at all. If it changes like an eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch, that's gonna be probably okay, but let's just try not to change it at all. It'll make our pocket pieces a lot easier and then you won't run into any hiccups with your pocket not fitting your hand very well. All right, so same thing, we're gonna line up our line that we drew. I'm gonna go by this red one so it's a little more accurate. And we're gonna slide this over to the center front, all right? And just like I said in the Heart portion on the back about torso length, do what works best for you. All right, now we're just going to trace off this 10 here and we'll just do a little bit along the pocket up here. We're gonna have to adjust that. 
And so make sure you transfer all your markings. And like I said before, like you can just cut this off and tape it down on top of here and, and that works too. And then you can just trim off all the larger size of the waist. So you have your smaller one just right on top with all the markings and everything looking good. All right, so now we need to establish this pocket opening and the side seam, right? Because we need to get over to this hip here. So what we're gonna do is put the pocket piece back here so that we know where the waistline ends. So I'm just gonna trace it off on there. All right, so get your pocket piece out and we're just gonna trace in this little missing amount here. So if this pocket were sewn on here like this, we lined up the waist and the hip like that, uh, or you know, put this at the notches there. You can see we have this little missing amount right there and we need to fill that in right there so that we know right where that side seam is. So we're just gonna draw that in. Let's line up all these edges here. Cause that's our true side seam, just like that. All right. And I'm gonna put a little piece of removable tape on this just in case I need it again, like this. All right, now we're gonna use our back that we just made to trace off our new side seam. So here's my side seam. Now, a little note about side seams and pants. Not all side seams are the identical shape on the back and on the front to each other. So you might have one pant where the side seam is really straight on the front, but really curvy on the back or vice versa. There's nothing wrong or right with any of those things. That's just the choice of the designer and how they drafted the pant. Like it's totally fine, but sometimes you get really lucky and the silhouette of the side seam there is exactly the same. So what's most important though, is that they match in length and that you can sew it together. And you're not going to get any weird bumps, right? So on this particular pattern, there is a notch lower down here on the leg. And if you have any notches like that, those are kind of a good reference because we know we haven't changed anything below, like for this one, we haven't changed anything below probably right here, right? So everything below that point or wherever that notch is on your pant, you know that that's okay. We don't have to touch anything below that. So really all we need to make sure is everything above that notch matches to everything above the notch on the front. And we can just focus on that little section because we haven't changed anything else. So we're gonna lay this down right on top, matching our new waist seam right here. And then we're gonna swing this over. And remember again, like we're trying to get to this full hip, which is like a lot higher here on the front because um, the front is a little bit lower than the back anyway. So it's a little trickier. So we're just gonna try and get this lined up best we can. And what you can do is you can pivot. So I'm gonna go to that little bump I made right there, the little guide. And then we're gonna pivot here just like this. And we can kind of look and see, okay, there's that notch. There we are, we're, we're in good shape. So you're just trying to get this length above that notch if you don't have a notch on your pant, then you can put one on there before you do all of your changes, just so you have some sort of a guide, all right? And this will work on any pant. Just, you can use your ruler, you can measure it. Just make sure if you're measuring, instead of walking your pattern piece to get that um, line, that you measure on the seam line. So, you know, pencil in your seam line and measure on that, and so you can compare your front and your back on the seam line. Don't measure that outer edge, it won't match, all right? Okay. So now we have our full side seam here. All right, so this is pretty much our finished silhouette of our front. And now you can look at the pocket section to find out how to adjust your pockets or if you need to adjust your pockets and any other pieces that you need to make this work. All right, this time we're gonna go from a larger waist to a smaller hip. So the only prep that you need to do to these pattern pieces is you need a perpendicular line to the grain line that intersects with the seam right here at the end seam and the crotch right there. So draw on your seam allowance here and draw a line that intersects that point right there. All right, now take your back, your smaller one, and we're just gonna line it up on that line there. And we're gonna slide this over here and let's just look at what we got here. We have this whole section here. So we want this larger size up here, but we want the smaller size down here. We want this one here. And so what we need to do is get this one blended into this hip right here, right? And so what we can do is tape these together. 
So let's tape this together. And I'm gonna line this up here at the center back. I'm just gonna actually just line up this curve here like that. I know it pulled that line a little bit off. All right, so now we wanna blend this hip into this waist right here. So we want the lower portion of this pant and we want the upper portion of this pant. And if it helps you here, I'm just gonna trim this off because we don't even want that, right? And so that makes it very visual, right? So remember that the hip is up here. It's not down here, this is your thigh. So this area here, this goes around your leg. It doesn't go around your hip. All this area up here goes around your torso. So this lower portion of this torso section, that's what goes around your hip. So you're gonna wanna line these up and then you can take a uh, French curve or you can take your pattern piece. All right, so this is my full length hip curve. It's probably a little bit overkill for these tiny patterns. So I'm just gonna use this ruler I've actually never used before. <laughs> so uh, we remember we need to blend in, like this is about where our hip line is, like this fullest part, the fullest part of this pattern, that is the hip right there, it's your seat, right? So we need to blend this in like this. And we can kind of split the difference. So I'm gonna use this ruler, kind of draw a portion of it like this, and I'm gonna flip it over like this and do this lower portion here. And get a nice smooth curve just like that. And then this will be your new cut line and you're gonna follow all of the markings of this larger size. So if you wanted to, we could cut this one off and remove it like this. And now we can use the upper waist of the larger size and then the smaller of the lower size. And there we go. So if you use this larger pattern for your whole pattern piece, you're gonna need this smaller one to kind of blend in with the leg, unless you don't want the leg to get too small with the hip size. But most likely your hip and your thigh are gonna be really hard to separate from one another size wise. You're gonna to have to kind of blend them together. And you can use a ruler to blend in that new leg circumference on your smaller size. Um, or uh, the pattern piece itself and draw in your new side seam. So there we go. So now this time we have the uh, 16 waist and a 10 hip, just like that. All right, so put this piece aside and we're gonna use it in a second to draw our side seam for our front. All right, so here's our front. And remember we need this cross line here. And so same thing, we're just gonna line it up on that cross line there and we're gonna slide it over at the center front. And remember, we want the lower leg and the upper portion here. So if we want, you know, you can get rid of part of this pattern here and just get rid of it so you don't see it at all. And then now you wanna blend this into this down here. And so that's when it gets kind of tricky, right? <laughs> so I think sometimes it depends on what this shape is right here. You might want your pocket piece to be in there. And so that way it fills in that space and you can see the full side seam. Or let's just cut this off here. Just like that. So now we have this upper waist of the larger size and this smaller one down here. And then I'll trim off the larger lower pant there. And now we just need to marry these two together. All right, so I have my pocket piece back here and I'm just gonna line it up on the notches there. Just like that. And we have some removable tape. We'll put it in there. And now we have a side seam as a, a whole side seam there because we have our pocket back in there and we can use our back to find the side seam that's gonna sew to this. So um, I mentioned this in the other tutorial for the other size difference. If you have a notch on the outer seam of your pant here, make sure that if you can, if you haven't changed anything below that notch, like the notch is up high, if the notch is really low, it's not gonna really matter and you might wanna add another one, but pick a point on your pant, on your back pant where you didn't change anything. So really all we're trying to do 
is true up the area of the pant that we've touched. And if we haven't touched an area, then leave it alone, don't mess with it. And then that way, all you have to focus on is this little upper area, right? And so if we know that we haven't changed anything below, like this line here looks pretty safe, then that should be our goal over here. We don't wanna make any changes beyond this crotch line. If you have a, a notch, you know, down here on your leg, and you know you haven't changed anything below that, use that as your point. You can always add a notch, that's fine too. It doesn't matter where you're, it's just, just a little guide. You don't have to use it to sew with, just use it as a guide so that you're not trying to measure the entire out seam when all you've changed is like the upper 14 inches. All right, so we're gonna use this back and we're gonna lay it right sides together. And we're gonna try and match the side seam here. And you wanna match it at the seam line here as if it's sewing together. So if the seam allowance is a half inch, you know, match it at that half inch point. And then come down here and trace on your new side seam, just like that. All right, and there's our new side seam, the red. You can see I changed this pocket opening, but you're going to adjust that in the pocket piece section to get back your whole pocket opening. So make sure you save one of these pattern pieces with the pocket opening or use your pocket piece to establish it. Uh, you need that length. You don't want it to change. You don't want the opening to get this small, right? You, you just need to move it down to here. All right, and we can cover that up. All right, so the last little note I just want to mention is that you can do this on pretty much any pant, but when you're using your back to trace off your side seam onto the front or vice versa, remember that not all side seams share the exact same silhouette. It's, it's kind of 50-50. And so there's nothing wrong with that. Just remember that you're not really going for an exact duplicate of that. You're looking for something that measures in length. And that's why I say find that little guide and anything below that don't touch, just adjust the top. If you have another front that you can use to trace that side seam so you can stick with the exact same silhouette that was on there and then just make sure the length matches, you can do that as well. And if you have to make any adjustments, make it right here. So if it's too short, just add the little bit you need there. And then if you need to make sure that it all is going to sew together, line this up, stack it on the seam line. So if this is a half inch seam right here, this is a half inch, stack it on those lines. And then make sure this line is nice and smooth, just like that, all right? All right, and then now you can check out the pocket section and find out what pieces you need to change, if you need to change them, and uh, you're good to go. All right, so let's find out if your pockets need any adjustment. So the first thing we need to do is redraw the pocket opening slash onto this pant. And if you're not using these trousers, maybe you have a different shape. All right, so we're gonna take this apart here and we're gonna line up our pattern piece here that we use to make this change onto our new silhouette here. And then when we get to this little spot right here where we've, you know, the, the um, waist ends onto the traced off version below, we're just gonna pivot this over until that point touches the side seam there. Now I want, I really want the, to match on the seam line too. So if the seam line is right here and right here, we want that seam line to make sure that we're on the waist there. We want it to all match. All right, so now we're gonna redraw this new pocket opening. And now this is our front that we cut out. Everything on this red, this is our new front and then all of this down here. And then this little guy right here is that under pocket piece right here. All right, so get your pocket pieces out and then we're going to tape them together as if they're sewn. So number five or your bottom pocket, the one that's on the very bottom of all your pockets, we're gonna put the pocket facing on there and sometimes this looks more like a little um, half circle of sorts, like in a jeans pocket. And um, this one is a trouser, so it's got a slash pocket and so it's got a longer facing. So do your best if you've already taped your paper on there to line up all these pieces. Just like that. You're gonna line them up matching on the waist and the side seam. And I'm gonna use a little bit of removable tape to hold them in place, just like that. 
And then this one right here is the top pocket. It's the one with the angle right here that is kind of faint right there. And uh, it gets sewn face down to all these pieces. You just match up this curved edge. It's a little easier to match this one up. Just make sure that you match it up pretty accurately. And uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna put this at the very bottom here. Even though it sews together like this, we're gonna put it at the bottom and you can do that too so you can see your pattern pieces and your line. So let's line up our edge like this. It doesn't matter that we have them stacked in a different layer order. It, they, they all sew together the same way. All right, so let's get that edge. And again, I'm gonna tape these with removable tape. All right. All right, so I've cut out my front and now I'm gonna lay this on top of this pocket line here. And so let me draw this in so you can see it a little better. Okay, so we're gonna lay these now underneath the pattern so we can kind of see how it's lining up. So this outer edge right here, even though it's not a part of the front, it's still part of the silhouette that we wanna transfer to the pocket, right? So we're gonna line this up here and I'm gonna line this up at the waist here as well. And so I can tell like this is really falling short at the side seam. So what we can do is kind of move this around a little bit and try and get it at the same spot like this and kind of split the difference. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this point down here at the bottom of the pocket to land on the side seam. Cause I'd much rather add to the top waist than to the side seam here. All right, and so now what I'm gonna do is trim away all of this. I'm gonna use a rotary knife to go through all the layers. I remember I added paper to all those layers underneath. All right, and so now I'm, gonna, I'm not going to trim off this little section quite yet. All right, so then all of the layers are the same, just like that. All right, and now I'm just gonna remove the top layer here, these top two pieces. I'm gonna leave the pocket, the top pocket back here and we're gonna line it back up again. All right. And now I'm gonna trim it off at the red line to make sure that they have the exact same pocket opening. All right, and so now let's look at our pieces here. So now we have this, these little bits hanging out here. So we're just going to true that up following the line of the pocket there. And same with here. You can see this little bit here. We're just gonna trim it up flush. It's just extra paper. And so this is the one with the opening, right? You can see there's the point of the opening, this along my finger here. I lost a little piece of paper there, but it's including the tape. <laughs> and then uh, that'll be the new opening in your new pocket piece. All right, and then for this one here, same thing, we're just gonna trim off this little bit of excess here and down here, just like that. And then take off the facing and make sure it doesn't need any truing up, but it looks pretty good so far. All right, so now we have all of our pocket pieces ready to go. Uh, they look a little bit different now because we really kicked out that hip compared to the smaller waist. So the pocket needed a little bit of extra room to be able to kick out to the side seam like that. Now for the remainder of your pattern pieces that you need, you can just use the size that corresponds to the place that it sews. So for the size 10 waist or the smaller waist, use the smaller waistband. If your, your fly it became a different size from the larger one, use the fly pieces that go with that size. And same with any pocket pieces or anything like that, use the one that corresponds to the area it's sewing to. Um, the, the, something like a welt probably doesn't grade at all. They're probably the same size for all pieces, but just double check. So if you're using the smaller waist, use the smaller welt. It might be a little bit um, shorter in length just to accommodate a proportion, like visual proportion. Uh, there might be a longer length on a larger size, so you just never know. So just make sure you use the one that corresponds to the spot that it's gonna sew to, and that way everything will fit just fine.
Thanks for watching today. I hope your pants come out fantastic. And if you like my channel, please consider leaving a comment. It really helps my channel out a lot. You can visit my website, which is right there at the bottom of the screen, or check out my sewing community, sosoguild.com. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Bye.